Matt Honan considers himself to be pretty savvy when it comes to security and the internet. But recently, he discovered just how devious hackers can be. The first clue that something bad was happening came when he tried to charge his phone. When I went and plugged it in, uh, the phone had this icon on it, an iTunes icon and a, and a plug. And so I went to connect it to my computer. And when I opened up my computer, the screen turned gray, and it asked for a four-digit pin. And I, I knew I didn't have a four-digit pin. I hadn't set up a four-digit pin. I, I grabbed my iPad out of my bag. And my iPad is also in this reset state that wanted a, a password to proceed. And the password that I knew should have worked didn't work. And at that point, I knew that I was being hacked. That was pretty terrifying, you know? I didn't know what they were doing at this point. I had no idea what their motivation was. The whole hack took less than 45 minutes. By 5 o'clock, basically my entire digital life is wiped out. My every device uh, I owned, everything I had had been taken over, and almost all of it completely deleted. Just about every picture I'd ever taken of my, of my daughter, old emails emails from people who were no longer alive, all kinds of stuff that, I, that was very precious to me. Matt thought he was the victim of a classic hack. Someone had repeatedly tried to crack his password and eventually succeeded. He went online to write about what happened, and then, unexpectedly, the hackers got in touch with him. They saw it, and they saw that I'd speculated that they had brute-forced my password, and this hacker got in touch with me to say, no, that's not how we did it. And at that point, I basically tried to strike a dialogue with them because I wanted to understand uh, both how things had happened and why they had happened. And I, I basically made a deal that I wouldn't press charges if they told me how it was done. I was angry, I was scared, I mean, I was, I was concerned, I was, I was a lot of things like that, but I also realized pretty quickly that this was an interesting story from a journalist's perspective. For Matt, it was personal, but also professional, because he happens to be a writer for Wired magazine. His hackers had discovered a series of loopholes in the internet, which, taken together, left him completely unprotected. It wasn't like they used some crazy cracking program to hack into all my stuff. Like they didn't, you know, they didn't, they didn't break my password, they didn't break any encryption, they didn't do any of that kind of stuff. What they did was they socially engineered all of my accounts. Uh, and, and social engineering is basically just a fancy term for a con job. Basically you con your way in to uh, a company's or a person's uh, security system by making them think that an attacker is actually a customer. The first step was to find a way of stealing his identity from one of his many online accounts. Their way in was a simple phone call to the online shopping service, Amazon. They gave Amazon a fake credit card number and added it to my account, and they hung up. They called Amazon back, and they told them they were locked out of my account and gave them the credit card number they had just added to my account. Once they did that, they were able to get a temporary password from Amazon. It was a simple deception, but effective. The hackers now owned his Amazon account. But they didn't go on a shopping spree. What they were after were the last four numbers of his credit card to pull off the next stage of their con. On those recent orders, they could see the last four digits of the credit card that I had used to pay. At the time, Apple was using those last four digits as an identity verification method. Once they had those, Apple gave them a password reset. They now owned Matt's Apple accounts, so they could access pretty much all of his digital life. The ultimate prize was his Twitter account, at Matt, for the hackers, a trophy. And to keep this prize, 
With just a few clicks, they destroyed his digital life. My computer, my iPhone, and my iPad, and they deleted my Google account so that I couldn't get back in there and, and get, you know, and, and kick them out of the Twitter account again. And so it was, it was, it was an interesting chain. They went from Amazon to Apple to Google to Twitter. These hackers knew the security flaws of the net and how to use them, one after another, to pull off this con. And they were just teenagers. It's just online vandalism. They thought that this was going to be funny, and they were teenagers, and so they didn't think about the implications of deleting everything someone owns and how much kind of precious data you may have in your life. You know, I mean, data is quite precious to, to people now. It's valuable, and uh, they didn't really see that. Once revealed, the loopholes involved in this hack were quickly closed. But in the anonymous realm of the internet, there will always be ways to steal someone's identity. Using the internet to take control of valuable data is now pretty routine. 